We bought this property in 1989. Um, we liked the property, we liked the fact that it had kiwi fruit on it. We were farming goats at the time and um, we wanted to continue farming goats. We have 11 hectares of native bush on the property and we have a stream along the base of the property and it ended up that we had about two kilometres of fencing to do. We talked with our fencing contractor and we put up a nine wire post and batten fence. Where the land was steep or had ruts or anything like that, tracks around the side of it, we pulled over. So we had nothing un going underneath. On the steep stuff we put the posts uh, three metres apart and we put battens every metre, every metre so there were three battens in between the um, posts. On the flatter land we expanded that to five metres and we um, again just put the three battens in and that was sufficient. Nine wires, post and batten. When you come to a waterway, um, of course it should be fenced off the same as all waterways should be fenced off for any stock. So you fence it off with the same fencing you're going to use as a boundary fence. If you have a fence going across a river, then you use a swinging gate system. But you make sure that it's heavy enough to, um, that the stock can't lean on it and open it. Um, once we completed the outside boundary fence, we then started working on the internal fencing. We actually managed to get onto a, a heap of second-hand Waratahs, which were reasonable price because they are fairly expensive, and we used those and we found that they, we just put them closer together, a couple of metres, 2.5 metres apart, and with eight wires on it, and that has proved to be perfectly good internal fencing. It's very important when you're doing your fencing that your angles don't have any stays running up them. If you're using an existing fence and you have got a, a stay in an angle post, we'll run a wire from the bottom of the stay to the top of the post. But what we do when we put an angle is we use a long angle, like a three metre angle, and drive it. And we put a, or if you're doing it by hand, you put a, uh, you foot your post, foot your angle, and put a breastplate in front of it, on one on one side and one on the other side, and that prevents your um, post shifting and prevents goats getting up it because that's the way that they will do it. But it's very important when you, um, on, on particular on steeper contoured land as, you, you, as we have on this farm, that you make sure that your bottom wires are no more than 75 80 mils max off the ground because goats will go under and they'll find the, the gap where it might be 150 and they'll have an attempt at squeezing under. If that was the case I would be using barbed wire in those situations and they won't go anywhere near it. They don't like getting pricked and um, they'll just keep right away from those areas. The critical thing to, to do with your wires is to have tensioners on that you can adjust um, to tighten up whenever you notice any slackness in them. And that, that happens just with weather movement or age and, and it just happens. So you've got the tensioners in there, it prevents you having to worry about restraining and everything. You just go around with your tensioner and tighten them up when they're back to full strength and they, they work well. We, as I said, run a kiwi fruit orchard and that is an important part of our income. Well, we graze our sheep and our goats in the kiwi fruit orchard. People say to us, how can you do that? You know, they ring bark everything, you know, they're notorious, eat everything. Well, we've never had a pro problem with ring barking because we provide salt blocks for them. And that, just as long as they've got a salt block in front of them, it tends to take their desire or need for minerals out. And um, so therefore they, they um, don't hurt our kiwi fruit and we get good crops. Um, so you can farm goats anywhere, um, providing you're prepared to put the effort into containing them, the property, particularly your boundary fence. We've found, Dawn and I, over the years that farming goats is not as complicated as what people often try and make out. Um, we've, we've had them on very steep land and we've never, ever, ever had a problem of escaping in over 30 years or over 30 years of farming goats. So our fences do stand the test of time. Our original fence that we put up here, 20 years old, the boundary fence, and we don't lose any goats and we don't get any goats in. 
So uh, that's a win-win situation.